It's time now for a look at latest in local news. In the news, the city of Jessup commissioners met Tuesday evening for the regular meeting and a lot of time honoring while mourning the life and of longtime city commissioner Gerald DeWitt, who passed away Sunday at the age of 76. Celebration of his life services taking place this morning at 11 a.m. at the Reinhardt and Sons Funeral Home Chapel with his nephew, City Commissioner Jonathan McCullough, speaking. Family will receive friends from 10 to 11 a.m. before the service this morning. Jonathan McCullough spoke last night at the meeting on how his uncle was a friend and a mentor and helped him during his campaign for city commissioner. McCullough said that the city has lost a great man who served the city well and never looked for any credit or publicity. Mike Deal called Gerald DeWitt a good friend and someone he loved, saying Gerald always had his back. And he said he learned a lot from the man. Tim Caulfield said that Gerald DeWitt, when he went to executive session, never took a seat, standing the entire time saying that he was for transparency and did not want to sit and get comfortable. He said, let's get on with the business and move on. Mayor Ralph Hickox also recognizing the service of Gerald DeWitt for the city of Jessup. Again, Gerald DeWitt. Funeral was set for today. He's survived by his wife of 56 years, Linda Driggers, a daughter of Melissa DeWitt of Pooler, and a granddaughter, Rain DeWitt of Savannah. Again, that service taking place today at the Reinhardt Sons Chapel at 11 a.m. In other news from the city meeting, they met an executive session for close to an hour, but came back and announced that no action was taken. Council and school board have agreed to provide more school resource officers to the school system. The city agreeing Tuesday to provide two more officers, which will be placed at Martha Ross Smith Elementary and James E. Bacon Elementary. The city will be reimbursed by the Board of Education. In the future, they're looking to provide an officer at every school in the county. City Police Department providing four and four from the county. School Superintendent Dr. Sean Kelly on hand at the city meeting, thanking the city for their partnership and all read it's all what's best for the safety of kids at school. City still working for the pool at Cracker Williams. Commissioner Bill Harvey says he goes by every day. He says there, things are looking good. He says when it's built, the city will be proud of the facility. And the commissioners approved another change order for the electrical supply at the pool. Interim City Manager Nick Ellis says they're doing everything they can to remain in budget which was been allotted for the pool project. Commissioners approved a request from Albert Bennett to put awning post on city right away on Macon Street, which will help beautify the city streets. Commissioners thank the Bennett's for all the work they've done on the Macon Street area to approve the beautification of the city, and they approved the request by unanimous vote. They also approved a request from the Boys and Girls Club for an alcohol permit for an event entitled Adult Prom. That's scheduled for March 9th at 312 East Cherry Street. This event will be for adults 21 years of age and older. Tickets will be sold to attend. The request again approved unanimously with the commissioners committing the Boys and Girls Club for all the great work they're doing here in the city of Jessup. Commissioners planning a retreat. They state they're going to meet somewhere in Savannah and discuss budget with department heads. The date Sunday, March 10th through Tuesday, March the 12th. GMA's Tiffany Stanley is scheduled to be on hand to be the moderator for the retreat. As of your Tuesday city commissioners meeting from last night, another important notice from the city. They state East Cherry Street will be closed from South Palm Street to South Mahogany Street at 10 p.m. on Saturday, February 10th for sewer and line repairs. They state they apologize for any inconvenience this may cause. Again, that's East Cherry Street closed from South Palm Street to South Mahogany Street this Saturday for sewer and line repairs. We'll be back with more news after this word from our sponsor of the commercial messages, so please stay tuned. Wayne County Historical Society is set to meet this Thursday, February 8th at Captain Joe's Seafood Restaurant. The program for the evening will be a presentation on the Ghost Town Circle presented by Janet Royal and Mary Lou Drury with assistance from other members who visit the historic site. meeting begins tomorrow night at 7 p.m. and Dutch Street Meal precedes the meeting at 6. Members are reminded it's a new year, so dues are now payable. Members are encouraged and visitors are welcome to attend. That's tomorrow night, the Wayne County Historical Society meeting at Captain Joe's Seafood Restaurant. Focus of Hog Hunters will soon be in Wayne County. The date's February 16th to the 18th. Wayne County Board of Tourism's 2024 Hog Jam. The statewide hunt begins that Friday at 2 p.m. February 16th ends on Sunday, February 18th at 12 noon. Registration for the hunt will close at 6 p.m. on Friday, February 16th at 6 p.m. with on-site registration available at Hunt Headquarters at the J.C. Fair Building. Online registration is open through 2 p.m. Friday the of that event that weekend again taking place at the fair building online registration will be open registration is fifty dollars for bow or gun hunters hunters can pay a hundred dollars to hunt in both categories hunter 16 and under hunt free with a registered adult hunter all hawks must be weighed into the fairgrounds in jessup but participants can hunt anywhere in the state where any of the connecting states have legal permission to do so hunters must be in line at weigh in by 12 noon or they're disqualified participants are responsible for knowledge of the rules Rules and registration available on their Tourism Board website, waynetourism.com. 
in the Hog Jam set for February 16th through the 18th with headquarters at the J.C. Fair building. Georgia Ford recently selected Scriven Mayor Jason Weaver as one of the 45 promising professionals to serve the organization's 2024 Young Game Changers program. Young Game Changers is a unique leadership action program hosted by Georgia Forward, a nonprofit organization administered by the Georgia Municipal Association. Young Game Changers brings professionals from across the state to work on persistent challenges of one Georgia community. In 2024, Valdosta Lyons County will host the Young Game Changers. Local leaders have finalized their four challenge questions that the 2024 Cohort will be charged to answer through the eight months they will spend developing specific actionable recommendations for the community. These questions focus on economic development, green infrastructure, corridor redevelopment, and community togetherness. And Jason Weaver says he's humbled to be chosen to work with such a diverse group of accomplished, creative, and hardworking young Georgians to create a positive impact to communities. He says he just can't wait to meet his fellow game changers in April. He says this is just another testament to his life motto of just living a dream and always just doing right. Chamber of Commerce selling tickets to their annual State of Education luncheon. That's set for Thursday, February 15th at Coastal Pines Technical College. Tickets are $30 for members and $40 for non-members, but everyone's invited to attend. It takes place at Coastal Pines Technical College that day. Once again, Thursday, February 15th, the time from 11 to 1. The guest on the program will be Wayne County School Superintendent Dr. Sean Kelly, the president of Coastal Pines Technical College, Mr. Lonnie Roberts, Sherry Bowen, who heads up Wayne Christian Academy, and Elizabeth Williams with Coastal Plains High School. If you need more information or a ticket or to make a reservation, call the chamber this week, number 912-427-2028. We'll be back with some final news notes after this word from our sponsor of the commercial messages, so please stay tuned. Final notes and news. Wayne County voters soon will be headed to the voting booth. They will be voting in the Georgia presidential primary. Also, we'll be voting yes or no to continue the one cent penny, the county SPLOS referendum. Again, a town hall meeting discussed that SPLOS 5 referendum will be held this coming Monday, February 12th, at the Auditorium of Coastal Pies Technical College. Public invited to come to the town hall event, learn more about the SPLOS referendum. On the program will be County Administrator Paul Drotty, along with the mayors of the Cities of Jessup, Odom, and Scriven, Jessup Mayor Ralph Hickok, Scriven Mayor Jason Weaver, Odom Mayor Greg Rozier, all on the program. Once again, that's a town hall meeting set for Monday, February 12th at Coastal Pines Technical College Auditorium. Early voting begins Monday, February 19th, runs up until Friday, March the 8th. Early voting Monday through Friday from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. each day. There are two Saturdays of early voting, Saturday, February 24th, and Saturday, March 2nd. Time of the Saturday early voting is from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. All the early voting taking place at one place, and that's the Crack Williams Rec Center at 245 East Bay Street. Last day to register to be able to vote in these elections is Monday, February 12th at 5 p.m. If you need more information on that, call the Wayne County Registrar's Office at 912-427-5950. At Monday's County Commissioner's meeting, commissioners stated that there's a lot of misinformation about this Plus 5 referendum out there on Facebook. So the county stays the correct information is on their website, waynecountygeorgia.us. They ask you go to that website, and they have all the correct information there. Also, the Chamber of Commerce has a flyer with the correct information as well. You can go by there and pick up a flyer that has all the information about the SPLOS 5 referendum, referendum, referendum on that as well. And if you need more information, again, they invite you to the town hall meeting this coming Monday at Coastal Pines Auditorium from 6 to 8 p.m. Finally, in the news, this is an election year in Wayne County. Eight candidates will soon be qualified to run and qualify for offices of sheriff, tax commissioner, clerk of court, solicitor, county commissioner, school board, all those races coming up. Again, qualifying gets underway for those offices March 4th through the 8th. Again, another race will be that for district attorney for the Brunswick Judicial Circuit. Incoming Keith Higgins has announced his candidacy to run for election, but also announcing a run for the district attorney's office. His longtime assistant, D.A. John B. Johnson, Mr. Johnson will be our special guest this Friday on the Butch and Bob Show to discuss his candidacy for the position of district attorney. Once again, that's a five-county circuit, including Wayne, Appling, Jeff Davis, Camden County, and Glenn County. Again, John B. Johnson, candidate for district attorney, our special guest this Friday on the Butch and Bob Show. That's going to do it for the latest in local news. Sports comes your way in a few minutes. Bob Morgan, same a great day.